then we can walk from that side of the wall. So it's yeah. Yeah. And it has the leaders on it. I don't mean to alarm you, but we're in Amsterdam this afternoon, this evening, I should say. And although our mission is essentially here on the Dutch Way Life to explore and discover what we call hidden Holland beyond Amsterdam, I think you'll agree that Amsterdam is the greatest capital city in the world, bar none. And on this uh, rather refreshing but overcast Sunday afternoon, typical Dutch Sunday afternoon, you and I, my friend, are going on a little adventure through Amsterdam. And not just any old part of Amsterdam either. We are in one of the most famous, uh, famous parts of the city. And a part of the city that I've wanted to explore for a long, long time. We are in... The Jordan. Lots of people put this on the post yesterday when I asked you guys where would you like to see most in, uh, in Amsterdam. And so many people put the Jordan. People from all over the world were saying, oh, can we go see the Jordan? Can we go and see the Grachten? Can we go see the Vestatore? So I decided, you know what, as a little surprise, I thought we'd come out here and I'd take you on a little walk. So I'm hoping you've got your walking shoes on, or rather your virtual walking shoes on. The bells you just heard there were from the famous Vestekerk. And there is the very, very beautiful Vestekorre. I never paid a lot of attention to this uh, tower in Amsterdam until I became a fan of uh, Johnny Jordan and Wim Sonnefeld and a couple of other uh, old school Dutch singers who were from this region. The Jordan is a typically um, traditionally, so a working class region of Amsterdam. It's a very, very, very poor region of Amsterdam uh, before the war, and uh, you could call it slums, really. Uh, I don't want to insult anybody who's from the Jordan, but um, you know, it was in, it was an area that was in great disrepair. But what it had going for it was it had a great culture. It had a fantastic culture of music, of community, of uh, of uh, working class people living together, helping each other, and. Uh, and creating a really special, a special culture, which was sort of brought to the mainstream by uh, Johnny Jordan and uh, Tante Lane, who were two very famous uh, Dutch um, Dutch singers back in the day. So, before we get started, I just want to say good afternoon. You probably weren't expecting this. You were probably thinking, Bob, if your channel's all about uh, hidden Holland beyond Amsterdam, what are you doing in Amsterdam? And the point is. Um, it's such a beautiful city. My, my journey with the Netherlands began in Amsterdam, as did, I imagine, a lot of people's journey who's watching the show now. Um, I remember coming to Amsterdam as a young man, uh, doing business here with business colleagues and exploring the city and sitting out on the gracht and having coffee. And, um, I love Amsterdam. It's one of the most prettiest, most beautiful, most fascinating uh, cities. It has a completely different atmosphere than than, uh, than most other cities that I've visited and uh, it's, it's got a special place in my heart. So even though we prefer on our show you know, smaller places around the Netherlands, Hidden Holland Beyond Amsterdam, today, in the name of you guys, for, of our community, from all the Tidwell members around the world, we're going to take a trip around the Jordaan, um, the Gracht, the Prince in the Gracht, hopefully the Kaisersgracht, 
Um, there's a Gracht called the Echaliantiae's Gracht. We're going to check out Vesterkerek and the Vestatora, head up to the Nordkerek, and then come back down again. My parking's uh, good till quarter past six. So we've got a good hour and a quarter, so get yourself comfy. And if you are connected with this area in any way, of the Jordan, home of the famous Johnny Jordan and Tante Lane and this whole Jordan culture, there's some great videos on YouTube about it. Uh, then put in a comment. Maybe you come from the Yordan. Maybe you were someone who yesterday, when I put the post up, said, hey, I love to see the Yordan. Well, we're here. It's, it's fairly busy, but it's not as busy as it would normally be for obvious reasons. Uh, there are quite a few people milling around, and I'm going to hopefully show you some of the most beautiful places. But the nice thing is, if you are joining us, make sure that you first of all put in your name and your location, and whether you know the Yordan, I cast you. Um, but you can also request to... Uh, see certain places. So if you want me to turn left or turn right, you want to have a closer look, just type the word zoom if you want me to zoom in. Type the word turn right if you want me to turn right. It's an interactive show. You guys are involved uh, and we got around 60 minutes. So let me spin you around and I'll see who's with us. We are starting, my friends, right here. So this is like the south part of the Jordan. Uh, We've got this awesome Dutch bike here that makes for a rather, <coughs> excuse me, I've got a bit of a horse though, makes for a rather nice, uh, nice postcard or a nice picture. And all the boats are still out, which is great to see. And uh, we're actually starting right at the bottom of the end. So the Jordan is, uh, is sort of in the west of Amsterdam. Let me just show you. And again, if you have just tuned in, you're watching the Dutch Wheel Life. It's just me today. Uh, Del's at home hanging out, and I just thought I'd uh, come out for another adventure. So we've come out to uh, Amsterdam uh, for no other reason than I just wanted to come out and do something special for all the members around the world who are part of our travel community. So um, uh, if you are tuned in and you do want a little shout out, then uh, put your name in the comments. Uh, and if you want me to shout someone else out, then let me know. We're going to be walking for about an hour. You are going to absolutely love this. I mean, oh, the history that is here. These Klachten, these, uh, these canals were a sort of extension of the original centre of Amsterdam. So Amsterdam has been enlarged over the years. And um, when things got a little bit tight, I think it was in the 1600s, maybe a little bit before, but maybe 1500s, uh, they expanded the city and the Grachtenhordel, as they call it, uh, was the result of that. And so they built the canals and they built these unfathomably amazing uh, houses and warehouses on the side of the canals. Obviously, Amsterdam uh, became the trading centre of the Republic, the United Republic of Seven Repu the Republic of the Seven United Netherlands. Sorry, uh, it became <laughs> it became <coughs> excuse me became the centre of trade after Antwerp uh, and these Grachtenhordel uh, are basically the extension of the city after the money started flowing in and they're just phenomenal so if you're a fan of Gables you're going to love this the first stop we're going to walk up here so that we can stand on the bridge at the Pr Prinsengracht uh, excuse me for my voice I do have a little bit of a sore throat uh, you're watching the Dutch World Life we are in Amsterdam today it's not hidden Holland it is the finest capital city in the world uh, and if you've got a connection to the city, put in a comment, let us know your story. Uh, this is a community-driven travel experience where you guys get to get involved. I mean, we're on Prinsengracht now, just so that you know. And if I just zoom into those gables, look at that. And the, the, all the streets around here are basically covered in these types of buildings. So although, you know, when we go to places like Dordrecht and Breda, you will see this in great abundance. Amsterdam is really on another level and uh, you know when I came I stepped out of the car earlier on I parked on the Nassau car and uh, honestly I was just blown away so uh, welcome to the show it's a live virtual walk through the city today with me Bob Buckley uh, do say hi to Adele she's not ill by the way she has been ill recently but she's uh, just decided to stay at home and I've come out for a, for a solo adventure today so uh, Look at that view. Yeah. We can actually zoom in a little bit closer. And each of these would have been merchants' houses or warehouses. So the first stop 
is the Vesta Kerrig. If you have got a request on the tour today through the Hedachten of Amsterdam, the boats are out. And it's rather gezellig, actually. It's not, it's not too sunny, but uh, we don't need a lot of sun to enjoy Amsterdam. Uh, if you've got a request that you'd like to see, then put it in the comments. We are on the Prince in Hedach now. Look, everyone's having a photo taken. We have a wedding going on. Cycles everywhere, but check this out, check this burn. So again, I told you, these houses were built, you know, primarily by merchants and by the uh, burgers of Amsterdam, the wealthy burgers. <laughs> Not the burgers as in the ones you eat, by the way. That's the Dutch name for citizens. But look at that gable. Lovely little house. That one's called, I, I think this must have been someone who, it must have been built by a Catholic because it's, it's got a sort of a name which alludes to, oops, excuse me, alludes to the Spanish uh, conquest of the Netherlands. So it says, in a Castel van Malaga, in the castle of Malaga. So interesting to note that during the rebellion and the uh, Dutch revolt, Amsterdam remained on the side of the Spanish and remained fervently Catholic for a heck of a long time and actually fought against a lot of the other Dutch cities. So, hmm, ooh, Amsterdam? No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Anyway, enough of that banter. We've got Trudy Weaver with us from upstate New York. Carla Sexton's here, Paul Van Bast's here. Cat Black is with us also, if you've always wanted to see Amsterdam. And the best bits, mind, not the touristy bits, although there's quite a few tourists to visit in these parts. Um, I should say the commercial bits. If you want to see the historical Amsterdam, then stay tuned. We've also got the Amsterdamachers dotted around everywhere. Uh, that's an Amsterdamacher. A little quiz. If you know what an Amsterdamacher is, a little Amsterdammer, put it in the comments now. Let's have a little quiz and see who's, whose Amsterdam general knowledge is up to scratch. Oh, what a beautiful view. I think the Anne Frank uh, uh, house is just a little bit further up here, but look at this. If only Adele were here to uh, count the gables for us. Kathleen Huntley's just joined us. Hello, Kathleen. We're in De Jordaan today in Amsterdam, and I'm taking you through the older part of the Grachtenhordel. Let me put the uh, binoculars on so you guys can see a little bit closer. Do put in a comment if you uh, know the area or you've got some sort of connection to it. It's a purely... Uh, a purely just for fun virtual tour this afternoon. Thanks so much as well for everybody who joined us yesterday in Marsland. That was a great tour. Uh, you might be wondering why I've come up to Amsterdam because our, you know, our whole mission is to explore and discover Hidden Hall and beyond Amsterdam. But I hadn't been up here for such a long time and I do love the city of Amsterdam. If you've never been before, it's really hard to explain the atmosphere here. It's exciting, alternative, multicultural, but all on the all on the backdrop of these incredibly beautiful historic Dutch buildings, remnants of this incredibly prosperous time during the uh, during the Dutch Golden Age. I mean, look at that! Look at that! That's beautiful, isn't it? And these are just lying in the uh, lying in the streets here in uh, in the Jordaan. There are smaller streets as well that go crisscrossy down the Jordan. And of course, uh, this area has very much, very much been uh, gentrified over the years, or so they say. Um, but obviously this is the way that they've maintained these, uh, these houses spectacular. And of course, you've got the obligatory freeze on the front of there. These freezes would often donate, donate the family or the person or the company that owned the building or built the building at least. Look at that. Cool, cool, cool. Right, let's keep going and I'll see if I can do some some shout outs while we're, uh, we're on our way. Headed to the Vesterkedek and I'm presuming that the Anne Frank Museum is next to the Vesterkedek and then we're going to stay on the uh, left hand side of the water. And we're going to explore the Jordan a little bit. Spectacular. Hello, Jim. Hello, May Johnson. Hello, Zen La. Desiree Mulder's with us. Who else is here? Debbie John Adet. Listen, uh, I just want to thank everybody for being with us. Uh, you are live from the Netherlands, so do feel free to leave a question, leave a comment. 
we're exploring the old Slastensordel of Amsterdam, the area of Amsterdam where you find these canals that slice the streets all the way around to create this sort of almost semicircle style city. Uh, the Grachtenvordel and the Jordaan were extensions of the original city. Uh, and then in the uh, late 1800s and early 1900s, they really became the, the working class areas. And what attracted me to the Jordaan was the culture of the music and the, uh, and the communal spirit. So I'd love to hear from you if you're from the Jordaan or you, um, you have some sort of connection with the Jordaan. We're still on Prince Nechracht. Oh, look, anybody fancy that today? The bells of the Vestapilly. Right, let's do a few shout outs. I've just seen Karen James's name there. Hiya, Karen, all the way from Oregon. Amandine Catio is also with us. Cat Black, great to see you, Cat. I should sh also shout out Elida Forbeg Colline. She's one of our official Explorer Club members and it's her birthday today. So, Alida, all the way in Jordan Station, just want to wish you a happy birthday. Uh, you've been a member of our community for ages and a, uh, a great member of our Explorers Club as well. So, happy birthday to you. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're with us. Uh, and if you've got someone in your family who's got a birthday or you just want to say hi to someone through our show, I will shout out as many people as possible as we're walking. Right, so we're headed up to the, uh, the Vesticetic now. Does anyone know if the Anna Frank house is next to the Vesticetic? I think it might. It's just got such a rugged, exciting vibe about it. You get this feeling that Amsterdam still hasn't been fully overtaken by the modern world, as it were. And when you walk through some of these streets and come up to a, a place like this, it's genuinely like going back in time, certainly in this part of the city anyway. So if you have just joined us, what you're looking at now is the very famous Vesterkerk with uh, the so-called Vestatoren here, which if you actually look at it, is, uh, is a very beautiful thing. It's sort of quite adorned and quite intricate. Beautiful, eh? sound of the tram as well and the familiar smell of cannabis just wafted past me it's the, honestly it's the land it's the city where everything's possible and again I know that I talk about hidden all and beyond Amsterdam and I believe that the rest of the country deserves its deserves its own limelight as well you have to admit that you know walking through the city is really like walking through no other city on earth uh, and it's a pleasure to be back here again. We are slap bang on the edge of the Jordan. And now you get a much better view of the, uh, the Vestikerik and the Vestator in there. Look at that. Let's take a little closer look. It's a beautiful thing. And it features in a lot of the songs that came out of the Jordan in the 50s and the 60s. Uh, So many people on the drive, really I'm struggling to keep up with you guys. I've got tons of comments, but keep them coming, keep them coming, keep hitting the like button. The more people that we get interacting with us, the more people are going to see our shows because I know there's millions of people around the world who love and miss the Netherlands right now. I get messages and emails pretty much every day from the thousands of people who are in our community uh, who aren't able to come here right now or maybe just in general for whatever reason, financial, uh, logistical, health reasons. So by doing this and uh, creating our live virtual tours, we're able to reconnect people. So the more that you guys interact, uh, the more other people will see the shows. And thanks so much for being here. This is lovely. Right, so I think I was right. So this is the Vesterkerk here, right? on the edge of the Jordan, headed to a graft called the Echali, Echali, sorry, Echela, Echelantier's graft. 
Echelanti Express. So listen to this story, this is interesting. In the 1600s, 1500s, 1600s, when the Low Countries had really mastered the domination of trade in Europe. Oh, wait a minute before I carry on. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna to have to interrupt this broadcast. Even the camera's losing it a little bit. Look what we've just found, sorry. Me. Did anyone, can you see what's in the window? I was just about to get into the story then. Oh my god. Sorry, excuse me, I didn't turn the last bit. Look, it's, it's only a Delft blue shop. Look at that. I mean, fair play. That is unbelievable. If you're a fan of the Delft Blue, get it in the comments now. Check this out. Holy oh, moly. No, no, no. I've never seen a Delft Blue shop like this before. We're on, still on the Princeton Path. Headed... Oh no, actually we're not on the Princeton Path. We've crossed over to another craft. I'll check it out in a moment. Is the address on there? I'm not sure. Look at this, some of these pieces are fantastic. We've got loads of fans of Dell's Blue. I know a leader's a fan of the Dell's Blue as well. It's a trick. Can you believe that? Look at that bars there. This is for holding tulips. Live from Amsterdam, can you believe it? It's like, it couldn't come out at a better time, could it? going to go in now, leader. I don't have enough money to buy anything in there, but I just want to check which uh, craft we're on. Oh yeah, still on the Princeton craft. And I was telling you about the Vesticeric and the Echaliantiers. So in the 15, 16, let's get back to the story, 15, 1600s, Amsterdam is booming, uh, trade is roaring, very wealthy people in Antwerp, uh, in Amsterdam, uh, in the city of so what starts happening is that things like literature and um, art and poetry uh, and creative endeavours start to start to bloom, right? And people start to have time and money to be able to take, take their time out to do things that they enjoy. And, but this tended to be more the aristocracy and the wealthy merchants. But what sprung up in Belgium and France were these things called um, in Dutch, Rede Rijkskamers. Rede Rijkskamers. And, uh, Rede Reg means rhetoric and um, karma is, uh, means room. And what they basically were were clubs that where the wealthy and erudite would meet regularly and they would basically read poetry to each other and read prose to each other and things that they'd wrote and ideas and, and whatnot. And uh, these were, as far as I understand it in French, called Echaliantier. In Dutch they were called Rede Reg's karmas and lots of famous uh, Dutch people were members of these at Aiden Eichskammers, these rhetoric salons, if you like, these discussion salons. I guess you had them in uh, many parts of the world as the Enlightenment took hold, you know. Well, anyway, there's a gracht in the street that was dedicated to them here in Amsterdam. Oh, look at that. There's a gracht in the street that was dedicated to these Echaliantiers, and each one had its own... Each one had its... Look at that, I'm literally breathless. Each one had its own house, and each one had its own emblem. So we are going to go find those as we explore the Jordan. Bloemgracht. Bloemgracht, look at this. Can anyone see what's on top of that building? Oh, sorry. Can you see it? Anyone seen this building? <laughs> That's unbelievable. And you can only imagine how much money and how wealthy these merchants were. The, the Dutch East India Company was the first multi-trillion corporation, the first corporation to be floated on the market. I mean, the merchants of the Low Countries really knew what they were doing. I'm not going to say Dutch because really at that time it wasn't really a thing such as Dutch. Um, necessarily, uh, but it was really this area, the Low Countries, Belgium, 
Flanders, Amsterdam, that was filled with this incredible merchant knowledge and skill. And this is the, basically the result of it. So we are on the uh, Case de Jongenbrug, and if I'm not mistaken, that is, that's, that's the Vesterkerk there. And that is the Anne Frank Museum next to it, is it not? Anybody visited the Anne Frank house? I have, but I was a, it was about 25 years ago now, so I can't recall, but I'm pretty sure there is. I really can't be bothered getting the map out, but obviously a lot of people come to Amsterdam to see the Anne Frank house. It's a very moving story. Um, and there are a lot of stories like Anne Frank's story uh, in the Netherlands. People you know, all over the country who have had similar experiences. So, uh, yeah, very important that we uh, keep sharing that stuff. What a lovely spot it is. Renee Lehman's just joined us. She's loving it. Renee, you weren't going to believe it. I don't want to alarm you. But we're in Amsterdam. And it is a live virtual tour with me, publicly, on the Dutch Way of Life. Our mission is to explore hidden home in Amsterdam. And today we are completely going against everything we believe in. I am going to get to them, <laughs> not really because I'm in Amsterdam, but we're exploring the Jordan, a very specific area of the city, uh, and I hope you are well. Lots of people on their boats, it's getting a little bit windy now. Hi. Right, so the question is, where are we off to next? Because we've ended up here, but as always, you guys get to choose where we go. So we're headed, ultimately headed north. And I'm trying to find this a Galliante aircraft. So if anyone can give me some pointers as to where it might be, I'll just uh, I'll just keep showing you some of the most beautiful parts of this uh, city, and you just keep enjoying them. You are watching the Dutch Real Life. You are live from the Netherlands. So do feel free to ask questions or put in comments or. Uh, Share your story if you are a fan of Amsterdam. A lot of people on our channel, I know that you love the smaller cities, but yeah, I think basically we owe Amsterdam at least one. Did you hear him giving uh, real estate advice? Um, I completely forgot what I was saying because I was eavesdropping on that guy. Right, who's he talking? Oh, we've got Pauline with us. Hello, Pauline. You're still all the way from Willemstad. That guy obviously wants to be on Tidal. Well, he recognised me. He still wants to say anything. He's probably a bit nervous. Right, so we're going to be we're walking north now towards the Nordekerig. Lots of people out and about today. It's proper gazellic. A little bit, little bit overcast. But nonetheless, you don't have to worry because uh, you can explore the, the city without leaving your armchair, my friend. Still on the Prinsengracht. I feel like we should cross over soon. We need to find out where the Echaliantiesgracht is. Let me get my map up. Echaliantiesgracht, here we go, directions. Because there is a tulip museum coming up in a minute. Right, so it's basically telling me to go this way. This is what we're going to do. We're headed to this Echalianti's class. And these buildings were essentially places where wealthy people could share ideas about the Renaissance and about humans and about philosophy and, you know, just really fascinating to me. So we're going to go find that street. We're going to go find that craft. The reason why I decided to do that as well, because I thought, well, you know, it's a good chance you've, put, you've never been to that part of Amsterdam. I know a lot of people visit the Vesterkerk, but it takes quite a long time to walk around the city. So uh, I shall do the honours. We've got about another 45 minutes. So let's enjoy the walk. Oh, I love these as well. So typical Amsterdam. -y. Okay, so apparently... We're going to keep going. Oh my word, look. We've also obviously got the houseboats as well. These are dotted all around this area. So it's sort of quite a posh area now, the Jordan. It's what you might call gentrified. Uh, I guess the back feats is, the electric back feats is a, a rather symbol of the gentrification of Amsterdam. Um, 
you know, and there was a big uproar in the 60s if you were, if you're interested in modern Dutch history. Oh. Half past, if you Sweet, and I guess there's a lot of people around the uh, the world who are from this area or were born in this area who um, who probably haven't heard that bell for for quite some time. So it's pretty great that we're out here and we're able to bring you this experience live. Oops, sorry, camera's going a bit crazy. Bring you this experience live from from Amsterdam. if anyone answered the question about the Amsterdamers, the little Amsterdamers I should say, but these are Amsterdam chairs here. These little red posts, they have their own little name. Beautiful. This is absolutely spectacular. And honestly you can walk around Amsterdam all day for weeks on end and you will be constantly amazed with every little street that you turn into, every little bridge that you come to. Um, so again, even though I'm a huge fan of uh, encouraging people to to come out of Amsterdam into the rest of the Netherlands, there's no denying that this city is truly the greatest, one of the most prettiest, most interesting, most varied, most exciting cities surely rival in New York. I've never even been to New York, so that's a completely unfounded and baseless statement. However, <laughs> um, I can, you know, as you can tell, I absolutely love this, uh, love this city. So apparently we go down, ooh, we go down this street. This is the uh, Tweede Lely Dwarsstraat. Tweede Lely Dwarsstraat. If you are following us on Google, then uh, I'm not going to spell it for you, but it's the Trader. Lely Glass Stad. And what's interesting about this street, we just stop here and we put the binoculars on. You can actually see. Oh, excuse the camera. You can actually see how the buildings are leaning. See that? Spectacular. I mean, you can only imagine what type of type of place it must have been back in the in the Dutch Republic in the 1600s. It must have been a, back then also an unbelievable place. You know, I mean, all of these little streets full of merchants and uh, spices and all these and these. So we're headed. We're just crossing the newer Lely Straat now. Lely Street. And again, confronted with another pair of. Uh, pair of gamers there, 17, 12, the one on the right is <laughs> And then we got down here, oh yeah, tell, tell, tell me you wouldn't want to be sat there right now, I mean, again, Amsterdam got some fantastic cafes, some fantastic bars, this is the newer lately on the corner of Trader Trade Lely Strand. And then on the right, you've got these, and again, you have to imagine just how much, how much money these must have cost to build back in the day, to build in stone, to build in this high quality, beautiful brick. It's unbelievable wealth here, so. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Love Amsterdam. 
and I think we're getting towards the uh, Chalientie start now where we're, where it's on the next Let's do it. So we're still on the Trader Lely Strand. I'm going to try and say hello to a few people like Diamond who's joined us. Hi, Diamond. Hello, Karen again. Kat's still with us. Roxana's still with us. Uh, if I haven't said hello to you yet, put your name and your uh, location in again. Tell me what time it is where you are. And uh, let me know when you last came to Amsterdam. That would be great. Do a little roll call. Look at this. Just look up. This is a live virtual tour as well, so if you're not new to our channel and you have never been on one of these before, this is not a pre-recorded um, video, although you may be watching the replay, which is pre-recorded, um, but it, we do focus on specialising live experiences from the Netherlands, because we just think it's a lot more authentic, a lot more fun for you guys to join in and um, create the... Uh, create the experience with us because we get tons of people who, uh, who are from the Netherlands, from all over the world, South Africa, Canada, uh, the USA, New Zealand, Spain, the UK, Ireland. So uh, let's have a little roll call. We've got 110, 15 people on the stream now. Put a little comment in, let us know you're here, and a little emoji, how you're enjoying it. I hope a few of you, like Pauline in uh, Willemstadt, are watching on the uh, big screen. You can... Uh, you can stream our shows via your smart TV, so, uh, via your smartphone to your smart TV. So uh, if you haven't done that yet, get on it. We found it. Echelantiesgracht. See it? Echelantiers, and look at those two buildings there. So we're sort of right in the middle of the Jordan here. The western uh, region of Amsterdam. Alright, Jim's still watching, Jim Backer. Bramalia, Ontario. Mary Pinkstron in South Australia was last here in 2018. Hello, Mary. Wow, look at that little building there, Mary. Isn't that gorgeous? You see that little thin one? Van der Boning is with us all the way from all the way in uh, Camp Lopen, Canada. Randy Cornell is also with Hey, Randy. From Missouri in the USA. Great to see you, my friend. Stuart Husband is here. Jeff Tresnak has also joined us. Jeff, my friend, great to see you. He says, uh, can you contact me about joining Explorers Club? I certainly can. And if you're wondering what Jeff's talking about, our Explorers Club is our private membership club where you get to request locations and you get to plan and order your own virtual tour from the Netherlands. Uh, from wherever your special place is. You get to work with us and the rest of our community and we will then broadcast your heritage adventure from wherever you want in the country live via Facebook. So, Jeff, I will get in touch with you about that. We've got tons of explorers with us. In fact, we've got our history club tonight, so I uh, have to make sure that I get back home for that. We're talking about the Dutch Revolt today. But, before we do that, here's the Echelantiesgracht. Where are the houses? Can you see the sign? But where are these little cars that they used to have the tourists of? This is the Gracht. Where's the street? Let's see if we can tell. So that's the Echelantier's Gracht. Where the Echelantier's Street. This is still the... It's a little bit. I think I've got it. Deborah English is also with us. We're going to carry on going this way. Because apparently, we're going to be able to see some of these houses. Now, these houses are dating back to like the 1600s. And you know that it's one of these Red and Eggs cars because they've got little emblems on the front. Uh, to denote the name of the club. It was like a, deb no, not a debating club, it's like a poetry club, basically, for the rich, for the wealthy, for the, for the cultured in Amsterdam, and they have them in all different cities. This is the Echalantiesstraat. 
Echelantier Strad. Let's keep going down here. And we're looking for houses with logos on the front of them. That's basically what they are. They're like little logos to denote that they were Ada Lakes cameras. So let's keep looking. And if you do see one of these houses with uh, a little logo on it, then put a little comment in and we'll, uh, we'll stop and have a look. Monique Tully's joined as well. I haven't seen you for ages, Monique. Born in Amsterdam, live in South California, haven't been to Holland for 35 years. I really enjoy your videos. I'm really, really so much about the Netherlands through your videos. Thank you so much. Roxana, Imam, and her dad say hi. Check this out. So this is right slap bang in the middle of the Jordan, the western part of Amsterdam. Anybody know what these hooks are for on the top of the houses? No, the camera's shaking his head. Anybody know? Let's, let's just uh, look a little closer. Why do you think these hooks are hanging over the houses here? Any idea? Drop it in the comments if you know the answer. And you are joining the Dutch Red Life. We're on Echaliantie Straat right now. And we're headed back to the Prinsengracht. And we're going to cross over and walk, hopefully, down the Kaisersgracht and see a little bit more of this gorgeous city. I'm not going to head too much into the touristy centre, commercial centre of Amsterdam. We're going to sort of stick around here, you and I, around the Jordan. We're on the train. Oh. oh. That looks good. Baker. I've got the wallet. I've got the wallet. There we go, there's the Nordic Is that right? Is that the Nordic I think it might be. Oh, beautiful. That is so nice. People on the back feet. And this is literally live from Amsterdam, so if you are joining us for the first time, then welcome to the channel. We explore and discover the Netherlands. I'm not going to say hidden Holland, although we normally uh, show you guys and take you to places that are uh, outside and off the beaten track, but there we are in Amsterdam. And I think it creates a beautiful, beautiful tour. We're touring the part of the Jordaan, uh, the part of Amsterdam in the west of the, west of the city. Very sort of cultured, posh part of the city. You've got this gorgeous deli bakery here. Um, but traditionally, it's a very working class area. We're on the crossroads of Echalantier Strad and Trader Echalantier Strad, and we still haven't found any of these so called Erede Eggs cameras. But you know what? I'm not too worried, I'm having a great time. And I guess the whole point of these trips is that we just explore the place. There's so many channels and so many uh, places online where you can watch pre recorded videos, I guess. And there'll be loads of videos of the Jordan, but this is live, you're actually experiencing it first hand with me and it's an absolute pleasure to have you with us. Check that out. People just sat out enjoying a little Heineken there. There we go. That is our first of Ada Eggs Karma. This is in fact I've got a feeling this might be the most famous one. It's 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 now a cafe. The Sonnefeld 8 Cafe. But this is one of the emblems the Raider Eichs Karma, the, the poetry clubs and societies that existed in the 1600s. The Echalantias. Can you see it, the sun? Check them out on YouTube. It's a really fascinating history of uh, this whole street, and this whole area being really a centre of debate and of culture and of sharing ideas and new concepts about the Enlightenment, about freedom and about humanism. We've got Erwa Owen with us. She says, that's the area. I grew up in the Rosedale Garden. Very cool that you're with us. And if you do know this, uh, this part of the Amsterdam well, a lot of people just head straight to the city and miss all this, but it's super gezellig. We're on the Echaleantiesgracht right now. On the bridge, very quiet today, actually. I'm talking a little bit more quietly because I've got a little sore throat.
And then on this side, we have also the Ichali Antiers Krach. And again, whenever you see these emblems on the front of the houses, that tells us that the, that house was used as one of these discussion rooms. Um, again, you can find it online if you want to check it out. I probably will write something about it as well on the page, talk a little bit more about it if you find it fascinating. But this is the Jordan, my friends. Where the smell of Pritzabalan and cannabis mix together to create an inimitable aroma of Amsterdam. That was a joke, just to, just to let you know. It's obviously not Pritzabalan, it's usually Argentinian steak, I'll be honest with you. Uh, and if you have just tuned in, welcome to the Dutch Way of Life. We're headed now west uh, towards the centre of the city. Mm. It was quarter to six. And someone yesterday said, hey, I'd love to, uh, I'd love to see the Nordekerk in Amsterdam, which is at the north part of the Jordan. So... I thought, let's do it. That's what this channel's all about, just giving you guys a window into the Netherlands just to, to show you what it's like to actually be in the country and for all those millions of people who would love to be here right now. If that's you, by the way, do comment. Tell us your Dutch connection. Tell us your the story behind why you follow our channel, why you're part of our community. Um, the whole point of this channel is to just give you a window into the country and... Oh, we are in Amsterdam today and it's very cool. Obviously, it'd be a lot of fun if Adele was here. So, I know that a lot of people miss Adele, but it was a choice between the staying at home and hanging out with her because she had some things to do today or bringing you guys out to explore the Jordan. So I'm hoping that everybody who's watching thinks that I made the right decision. Some lovely little shops here in, the, in this part of Amsterdam. And some beautiful restaurants. So uh, next time you visit and you come down to the central station, you get out instead of walking straight on down the Dam Rack or headed to the New Market. Turn right. Turn right out of Central Station and come down to the Jordan. And uh, really, it's a beautiful part of the city. Oh, is that? Is that an emblem? Do you see? It does look like an emblem, doesn't it? Yeah, look. That is definitely the dose. The dose. See that? So these were, I'm thinking, these were the names of these uh, Raider Eggs cans that existed here. And again, if you just join us, we are in Amsterdam today for a virtual tour. Oh, I love this bit. I love this bit. It's one of my favourite bits. We came here a few months ago. It's absolutely gorgeous to be on now. So we've come back up to the... Sorry, that was the Vesta Kerrick. That wasn't the Nava Kerrick. Back up to the Prince and the Flash. Everybody out on their boats. There was a little spitting of rain then. So the question is, I've got about 20 minutes left. Let's say 15 minutes left. We can either walk up to the Nordekedic, which is straight on behind me, or we can go across the bridge at the Vesterkedic and walk back down the other flacht. I think it's the, is it the Kaisersflacht. So if you want to see the Vesterkedic, the Nordekedic type church, but if you want to see some of the some of the rest of the Grachten, it is the Kaisersgracht and the Herengracht. These are both, I mean, this is the Prinzengracht, I imagine named after the Prince of Orange. Um, and the Kaisersgracht and the Herengracht are also beautiful. So put that in the comments now. You can get involved. It is a democratic, it's not really, yeah, but it's interactive. The reason it's not democratic is because you can't, have a vote, unfortunately. But if you could, if there was technology, I'd do that. I'd be... Anyway, enough of that. <laughs> You're watching The Dutch Real Life, and uh, we are in Amsterdam today, my friends. 
Oh, Licky's just joined us. Don't worry, Adele's not ill anymore. She is just on. Got some things to do, but I really wanted to come out here and uh, see this place. So I brought you guys out, and I'm really hoping you think I made the right decision. We've got a few people staying church, a few people staying more after, especially Cat Black. Is a leader still with us? A leader Dyer from Jordan Station. A leader, if you are still with us, can you please leave a comment and tell us what you would like us to do? The church would take a little bit longer, but I don't mind. Let's see what you guys say. <laughs> Annalise Boxing. Who is this that comments on the page? But Bob and Adele are travelling. Annalise, are you and your mum baffled who comments on our page? Don't worry, they're authorised to comment by us, so if you do see someone commenting with the Dutch way life, don't be afraid, Annalise. It's all good. It's one of our helpers. Right, let's go down the Kaisersgracht. So we obviously walk back up here. We are starting to get a little bit of rain. So for the last 10 minutes, we're going to walk south back down uh, the Kaisersgracht. And hopefully we can end up at the statues of Johnny Jordan, Tante Lane and the rest of the, uh, the famous musicians who are from this area. And I can get back in time. Oh, quick look at the Del Sweat, look, for those people who didn't see it. I can get them back in time and I don't get fine. I mean, one of the challenges about Amsterdam is it's so, it's so pricey to actually come here. If you're travelling on the train, it's going to cost you quite a bit if you're travelling from the Netherlands. And parking is, even on a Sunday, uh, a full contact sport, as you might say. Um, in terms of the value, in terms of the price, I think, I think they pay around seven euros an hour. So then that's cheaper, that's a Sunday. So uh, you've got to be prepared to bring some cash with you if you come to Amsterdam nowadays, unfortunately. Uh, so the best thing is come with a group, you can share the costs, and then you can stick one to the man. Oh yeah! Right. So let us commence with the last part of the trip. The sun is going down, apparently sunsets. Whoa! Sunsets. Uh, around half past six in Amsterdam and my ticket runs out at quarter past six. So we're going to head down south. I'm going to risk my life right now. I'm rubbish at this. I've been coming to this city for 20 odd years. That man is totally rubbish. See that? See that? That was actually not bad. Woo. That wasn't bad. We've got to watch out in Amsterdam. Woo. Hell yeah. Sorry. Got a bit way late there. So we've got a request from uh, Kat and Andre. Andre, sorry, in uh, California who say should go in a coffee shop. Uh, I could do with a coffee, actually. I could definitely do with a coffee. Okay, I know it's on red, but... I ain't got no time for that. We're in Amsterdam, we don't mind. <laughs> Alright. So, if you're wondering what's going on, we're on an adventure through Amsterdam. The lights are uh, going down, it's getting darker now. Restaurants are still open, it's much quieter than it would normally be here in the city. Uh, and we're on the, uh, the square just next to the Vestikere here, right on the edge of the Jordan. We're going to head south, back to my car. Hopefully, down the Herenkracht, and you can see some of this beautiful spot. I mean, obviously, Amsterdam is a huge city. I could spend days just walking around a few streets. But I'm hoping that you're having a, a nice, enjoyable time wherever you're at. Let's just show one souvenir shop. Holy smokes, remember those? Remember that before COVID when you used to come to Holland and buy souvenirs? <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Right. I think we're there. I think we are there, my friends. <sighs> I've put way too many layers on, to be fair. I'm roasting. But it's all good. So this is the Nick Engelsman Brug. And uh, that is a very famous view of Amsterdam. 
And this building, Fleis Hauerai, believe it or not, I have a miniature model of this. For those people who bought the uh, miniature Grachtenhaus and the little Dutch house uh, collectible sets from us, we had a few for sale a few weeks ago. One of the uh, shops that's included is the Fleis Hauerai, the butchers, and it's actually modelled on this shop, on the Kaiser's Graf, believe it or not. So, uh, Margaret Anthony, you've got one of the sets. Check it out. It's uh, beautiful. So we're headed down the Kaiser's Craft. The rain is coming down now, so uh, forgive me if we get a little bit of water on the lens. We've got about 10 minutes left, uh, and it's still beautiful. Even just to walk in the, in the rain. Let me just show you the Kaiser's Craft. And again, the history of these, uh, these areas is fascinating because they were actually built as extensions to the city for, the, for really the, only the most wealthy and uh, if we zoom in, you can really start to see just how spectacular some of the houses are here. I don't know if you fancy living here. I don't know if Adele would like it, but it's always been a dream of mine to, to live in Amsterdam, S certainly in one of these places, you know, have, have our little studio here where we make our films, and who knows, maybe it'll happen. Uh, but it was really where Amsterdam is where my journey with the Dutch Way started and it's, a, it's great to be back here so we got about 10 minutes left on the Kaiser's Craft we're going to walk down there now uh, and if you would like me to say hi to you or you've got a comment uh, you'd like to give me some feedback good or bad then uh, put it just below the video now you are watching the Dutch Way I just feel like we have to look up here before we keep going down this street because it's really when you look up, see we've got a bit of, bit of water on the lens, it is really when you look up in the Netherlands that you start to experience just how spectacular the human endeavour of creation is in this country and I think a lot of people who live here, uh, you know, whether Dutch or otherwise, you know, just sort of get used to this, but, you know, what we have to imagine is that these were built by human hands. Uh, they were designed and created by people and with such beautiful engineering and beautiful architecture um, the way that water glints off the windows the way the light catches the stone and golden hour uh, as you can tell I'm a huge fan of the Netherlands and a huge fan of Dutch life and Dutch culture and Dutch architecture and uh, if you are too then I'm very glad that you're with us today and if you've got Dutch heritage here as well if you're from Amsterdam or uh, your family come from Amsterdam. Maybe you've never even been to Amsterdam before. There's a good chance. Uh, then this is the historical Kaisersgracht. A very famous part of the city. Right, sweet. I'm just going to say hello to a few of you guys because we've had so many people taking the time to comment. I want to just say hello to you. We've got John Fecht with us. Uh, we've got Paul van Bast, who's still with us. Karen James is still with us. Tilly is with us as well. Hello, Tilly. We've got Shell Gooch with us. Clara Maycock. Great to have you with us, Clara. Jim Back is also with us. Hiya, Jim. I will try and say hello to as many people as possible. This is the Heerengracht. You can see the houses are a lot more... Uh, they seem to be a lot more majestic on this graph. Maybe it could have well have been that the closer to the city you were, the more expensive the houses became. I'm not quite sure how it worked in that way, but uh, what's nice about it right now is that... Can you just look, over, just look over the bridge? Can you see how the lights are coming on? And everything's sort of starting to turn all gezellig. They've got the lovely autumn leaves on the on the street and a lot of people tend to come to Amsterdam in summer but what's nice about Amsterdam in autumn and winter is you do get a lot of the place to yourself so don't be put off by the slightly colder weather or a little bit of rain because it is a super time to come to to see the city still on Kaiserkracht and we're headed down to Nassau Kada. oh it's starting to it's starting to rain right now. We've got about five minutes left, so if you've got a message or you've got any feedback or you just want to let me know whether or not you enjoyed the show. A lot of people might be a bit shocked that I came here because we do 
specialise and focus on hidden Holland beyond Amsterdam but really you know this is what you're looking at now is is the reason I sort of came here there's very few places other than Amsterdam where you can see this type of city planning in action <sighs> it's beautiful and it is a real pleasure to walk around it it's starting to rain quite hard now so I think we may bring it to a close short my friends it's been a fantastic tour we've been going an hour already we're on the Kaiser's craft and you know what I think it's time for me to hunker down so if you have enjoyed it I've tried to shout out as many people as possible, but there's been so many comments. Will Elmina has been with us, Margie bergstrom has been with us, Helen's been with us, Helen Joel, Ina van Vijk has been with us, Louise has been with us. Honestly, there's just so many people, and uh, it's a pleasure to have you all here. Just to give you a little experience of Amsterdam. Uh, an hour's worth of the Jordan in Amsterdam honestly I could stay here all day and there's a good chance that I'll come back up here we've got some stuff on the lens there sorry about that there's a good chance I'll come back up to Amsterdam I love the place um, came up here because we had you know, an overwhelming amount of people who said they wanted to see the place again that's what our channel's about if you want to keep us going if you want to support us and you want to make sure that we can keep doing this then please join our Explorers Club uh, it's a it works out about 10 euros a month and it helps you to it helps us to keep going it helps us to be able to keep our channel free uh, you'll have noticed there's no advertising on our channel we don't have that sort of shenanigans uh, we rely on people who join our club to keep to keep the channel and the community moving so if you do want to join the club type the word club now and again it works around out around 33 cents a day um, I'm getting soaking wet right now but I don't really care because I'm in Amsterdam the greatest city, the greatest capital city in the world. Not my favourite Dutch city, you know. I do have a favourite, and I'll let you guess what it is. Uh, but from the Kaiserskracht, I should bid you a very good evening. Goedenavond. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to finish the tour by giving you a little view, just to finish up a little taster of life on a Sunday evening in the Netherlands. For our Explorer Club members who have already joined up, we've got a history club at 8.30 tonight, so don't forget that. Um, and until next time, look after yourselves, look after each other, and keep in touch.